And joining us now, great to welcome to our book talk segment. A woman has written a very interesting and maybe a little alarming book as well. It's called The Spinning Wheel, The Electromagnetic Force That Created the Modern World and Could Destroy It. Great title of the book, and we're joined today by science journalist Alana Mitchell. She's based up in Canada, I believe. And Alana, good to talk with you. How are you? Great, great to, great to be here, Doug. You're, you're in Toronto, is that right? I'm in Toronto, yeah. Yeah, my, my, both grandparents and my mother was born in Canada, so I, uh, I'm talking to the family, I, I feel like, whenever I talk to somebody from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Everybody yeah. knows each other up there, it seems. <laughs> Well, it's a fascinating book. I had a chance to read through it, Alana, and uh, and we all kind of you know know about the North Pole, obviously, and and all that electromagnetism and you know all that. But well, I didn't even realize that the poles switched uh, before, and it's kind of a I, kind of a scary topic. How did you get involved in that? Oh, you know, something just said to me, you know, uh, it was explaining to me that the Earth is a giant magnet with two poles, and I had never really thought about why we call them the North Pole and the South Pole. That is because they're the poles of the magnet that is our planet. And and then this person said to me, you know, and, and those poles switch places and they may be poised to do it again. And I thought, you know, I'm a journalist, I'm a science journalist, and I thought, you know, if this is true, it's a great story. <laughs> so I just started looking at it. Uh, and, uh, according to research, and I, I was going to ask you this, uh, 780,000 years ago, how, how do we know that? Because nobody really kept records that long ago. How do we know that that happened that, at that particular time, when it switched right. the last time? Well, the, right. So it switched the last time, 780,000 years ago, and, and you're right, we weren't even around. Our species wasn't here then, but the planet has kept records. So there, there's an archive within the planet of all the times that the that the, uh, that the poles have switched places, and, and the best record of that is in the new parts of the crust that are being made, where the, te- where the plates on the crust are spreading on the seabed floor. So scientists in, in the last several decades have been able to look at where the new crust is forming and cooling on the seabed floor, and they've tracked this whole pattern of reversals through, through looking at the seabed floor where it's being made. Hmm, interesting. I know the uh, you always hear about you can tell how old a tree is by the rings in the trees and rock formations and all that. So yeah. that's how they determine it then from 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 the rock formations, basically. It's from it's from the direction of the. So when when this when this new crust is formed, it it cools down enough so that it locks in a sort of a magnetic signature from the time and place where it cooled, and that tells uh, scientists the direction and the strength of the of the magnetic field on the Earth at that time. Yeah. So it's 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 like a it's it's a lot. Like like the tree ring, so it it, gro- it grows out from these from this new crust that's being made, and it's it's sort of like a mirror pattern on either side of the the new seam in the Earth's crust that is being formed. So if you think about, you know, the point to, if it points to the north, it's black. If it points to the south, it's it's white. It's like a zebra pattern that's right. forming all, on all, of magnetism along the along the bottom of the seabed floor. Obviously, uh, you know, the, the poles and all that uh, have a lot to do with, you know, uh, you know aviation, obviously. You know, you know the ships before it, planes, you know, would point to the North Star and go by that way and, and compasses and all that. And, and if this does happen, whenever it does, if it does again, everything's going to be reversed? Is that, is that, is that, uh, is that what's going to happen? Uh, well, tell, us, tell us some of the things. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's really fascinating, isn't it? It's so, so really what happens is that the Earth has, you know, four components to it. So it's got the crust where we are, and then it's got the mantle inside, and then there's this outer liquid core, and then an inner solid core. And so the outer liquid core is where the magnetic field is being generated. So it's being created day in and day out in there. And and it, mainly it's got this, this two-pole system. So there's one sort of two-pole Magnetis, magnetic structure that's really strong, and that's what gives us our north and south pole. But there are also these other magnetic factions, or sort of, I think of it as sort of the battle of the titans in there. There are these, these, these other magnetic factions that are trying to destabilize this dominant two-pole system that we have that gives us our north and south. And so they're, they're sort of bleeding energy from that two-pole system. They're, they're, it's like a revolution going on in there, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and every now and again, yeah, it's really cool. And, and every now and again, they win. So they, they, they suck enough energy from the two-pole system that the poles say, you know, wait a sec, I've gotta, we've got to reassert our own dominance. And to do that, what they do is they, they, they go through this long migration. So they switch places over centuries, if not thousands of years, and then snap back into place on opposite sides of the, of the, of the planet from where they started. And then they reassert this two-pole system and, you know, the, the, the field, this big magnetic field that protects our planet 
from from solar and galactic radiation, you know, become strong again. But but the thing that fascinated me about all this is that as the poles are switching places, the magnetic field that protects us from all that solar and galactic radiation, it, it diminishes. The scientists say it decays, like it's a living thing. It just decays to about 10% of its usual strength. And that exposes the planet to extra radiation. Hmm. Yeah, I know you talk about that in the book. And also, uh, you know, we've always thought animals, particularly birds, uh, you know, how do they know where they're going? And they have kind of a, a, a tuned into the magnetic uh, poles or magnetic field to kind of, you know, navigate themselves. So that would change everything in the animal kingdom, or at least the bird kingdom, right? What, what they would do. They just have to readjust themselves, right? They would have to readjust themselves. And maybe, and, and one of the great scientists on this is, is a guy named uh, Michael Winkelhofer who lives in Germany, and he's studied it extensively. So I went to see him, and he says that they're pretty sure that birds are, are going to be able to, you know, make it through. They, they, they readjust their magnetic sensibilities day to day from, you know, on a day to day basis as they're, as they're migrating. And they're pretty sure that birds and other creatures are going to be able to adjust even though the poles will be moving and even though in, as the poles make their long migration, other poles will emerge. So you could have, you would have not two poles, but four or six or eight mm. on the planet. And that could really confuse creatures. But scientists think that they're adaptable enough to, to adjust to that. The thing that they're worried about there is that a lot of the, a lot of the animals um, that need to navigate through, through the magnetic field are already endangered. So you have, like, a lot of the birds are in pretty tough shape, whales, sea turtles, things that really rely on the navigational field of the, uh, to, to, on the magnetic field to navigate are already not as resilient as you would hope. Mm. So they're saying, well, we don't know what's going to happen to those guys when the field begins to reverse and, and there are all these other alternate magnetic poles on the planet to navigate by. Now, let's say this happens, you know, in our lifetimes, and, you know, we, we want to fly somewhere. Is that going to affect aviation and, and, and communications as well? Right. So it, it, it's very unlikely to happen in our lifetime. This is nobody I talk to, no, none of the scientists I talk to think that it's going to happen in our lifetime. What they can say for sure is that it will happen and that this might be the beginning of it. But they, they won't go further than that because they don't know enough. They're, they're still learning about how this field works and how the, these internal contortions, this turbulence within the outer core works. So they won't go as far as to say that it's definitely happening. They just can't do that. And, but they will say that it will eventually happen. So when it eventually happens, then, yeah, there's going to be a lot of trouble navigating um, in, in planes. GPS could be quite compromised if there is a solar storm that takes out satellites that control that. Um, there, there will be uh, immense, immense changes to civilization as we know it yeah well i think this would make a great movie in the sense they could do a, kind of a what if movie about all this that would be fascinating <laughs> yeah yeah there, it's 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 fascinating because there's so much that, that could that change we, we now yeah. know about it yeah. that that could change and and it's it does it feels a bit dystopic when you when you think about it but uh you know this, the good thing is that we've got warning like we nobody is saying it's going to happen tomorrow and if we sort of buckle down and thought about it, we might be able to build in protections or warning systems or, you know, ways that could help our civilization adapt to the changes that are going to come eventually. Yeah. yeah nothing we can do to prevent it, but we can uh, hopefully uh, protect ourselves somewhat, right? That's exactly right. I mean, we cannot prevent it. It absolutely is part of how, how the, the planet functions, and it will happen. Um, but you're right. We could, we could go a long way toward... Uh, you know, supporting scientists to understand it more and then developing protective mechanisms. That's right. The name of the book is The Spinning Magnet, the electromagnetic force that yeah. created the modern world and could destroy it. And Alana Mitchell has been our guest. Alana, do you have a website you can direct people to? I'm sure they're going to want to get more information about the book. Yeah, the website is www.alanamitchell.com. And it's A-L-A-N-N-A -N -N -A and Mitchell. And uh, great book. And a lot of pleasure talking to you. Hopefully we can do it again. It uh, gives you a lot, a lot of thinking material there. But uh, we won't have to worry about it too much, at least today, right? <laughs> That's correct, Doug. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Alana. We'll talk to you soon. That's right. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision and medical help to a million adults and their kids. 
right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.com.